Do we ever stand back and ask where does our money go? Are we all just sleepwalking spenders, buying things we don't really need and spending too much on the essentials? Are we handing over our hard-earned money without giving it a second thought? I'm Katrina Devereaux and in this series I'll be joined by personal finance expert Sinead Ryan and we're here to help you take control of your cash. We'll have industry insiders giving you their tips on saving your money and behavioural economist Dr Pete Lunn will reveal how our basic human instincts are costing us at the checkout. Welcome to My Money and Me. This week we meet a Dublin family facing a familiar Irish problem, negative equity. Our insider tips will help you save money on your wedding day and the My Money and Me consumer panel discovered just how easily we become attached to numbers, no matter what the consequences. So you'll end up spending five or six hundred instead of the four hundred you went in to spend. You supposed to move it. Choo, 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 choo. No. What's that? Lorna and Keith Kelly live in Artane in Dublin with their two kids, Ryan and Faye. Lorna stays at home with the kids and Keith works as the manager of the Artane band. We don't really think about money, to be honest. We, we get by, we do our weekly shopping, we meet our bills, but there's no long-term plan. We've never really saved properly. It's always just been get the money to spend on something that's coming up. One thing they are all too familiar with is negative equity. They bought a house in Roscommon at the height of the property boom. We were one of the last people in 2007, I think, um, to get a 100% mortgage. But when Keith landed his dream job managing the Artane band, they moved to Dublin. Hello, Artane School of Music. We're very much caught. Like, we don't want to keep our other house. We want to buy a new family home. But we're stuck now at the minute where we're paying rent, which is, to, to me, is dead money, instead of that actually going off a mortgage. With two young children, rent and a mortgage to pay, I wonder if they're finding it hard to live off a single income. And what does the end of the month look like for you guys? Overdraft. <laughs> Same as the rest of the month, really. It's just... We're never really on top of it. It always seems to be, you know, Messing. Robin Peter to pay Paul. I wouldn't like to know how much I spent on coffee in the last year. Mm. Uh, she would. Yeah. <laughs> I don't drink coffee, so it would be something I do. <laughs> we spend a lot of money on the kids too, actually. <laughs> There's clothes I... that still have tags, <laughs> and, and we're just taking the tags off so they can put them on them once. No, but I'm not that bad. These are a lovely yeah. pair of pants with a tag on them. Seven to eight. He's got a little bit to grow into I them. Know, yeah. <laughs> so you were just buying a hedge? Yeah. I was, yeah. Okay. That one for Halloween. That's for next Halloween, yeah. <laughs> That's your zombie t-shirt for next Halloween. Oh, that's terrifying. There's a lot more over that side, though, oh. as well. Oh, right. A lot of tags here. Oh, they're lovely wellies. Do you wear these all the time? Yes. <gasps> wow, look at those lovely wellies. Yeah, and, and snow shoes. They have a reduced. And lovely yeah. shoes for when you're... A teenager. <laughs> so we have shoes probably to do him up until he is in, he's, he's making his communion, I think. Swimming. Oh, that's for swimming, that's yeah. We, yeah. Will that fit you? If we go swimming, yeah. In your mind, you saved six because you, oh, did, yeah. it was 16 and you got it for 10. So yeah. that's actually six Look that you saved. Yeah. But really, you actually Spent handed 10. over 10. Yes, but we're going on holidays this year, so he's going to need them. This is like MTV Cribs, but for children. Oh, yeah. Look at that for a wardrobe. Like a lot of these dresses, to fade, get two years out of these anyway. You know we live in Ireland I and know, it's very yeah. cold and wet most I'm of the time. I'm very optimistic. <laughs> She's gonna have to do about three wardrobe changes per day on her holidays in June. Count them, oh, count really? how many pairs of shorts does she have. And now come on, Lorna, there's no Four. way she needs all those shorts. Five, <laughs> six. That's lovely. Eleven, oh, twelve. She has 16 pairs of shorts. 22, 23 tops. Will you wear all these shorts on your holidays? Yeah. Will you? Yes. Good <laughs> <She> girl. <laughs> Will your mommy make you wear all these shorts on your holidays just to justify her expenditure? Yeah. yeah. You own a house in Roscommon. Tell me about that. We bought in the boom 2007, like a lot of people, and we're now in a good equity. So we now, the rent that we get for the house doesn't pay the mortgage, so we have to pay, top that up every month, as well as paying rent up here. So that home is costing you? It is, yeah. So it, like I think at the minute we're in about 40, 50,000 negative equity, mm -hmm. I think at the minute. Which isn't as bad as it was, but it still feels like a bit of an anchor. 
and tying us down. And looking to the future, short term and long term, where would you like to be? We want a new home, mm. but now with the new rules, we need 20% deposit. So in Dublin, if you're even looking at mm. a house for 300,000, we need 60,000 in the bank, plus clear and negative. It just seems... Mm. Yeah, it, it seems It seems impossible, yeah. like... Here are all the bills. Uh, that's where all the uh, skeletons are hiding, I think. Bills, bank statements. Myself and Sinead are going to pour over this. Don't spend any money in the meantime. <laughs> we will be back with a plan. This is Lorna. And this is her husband, Keith. They're just spending, spending, and they're not really sure where the money is going. They have so many transactions, even in the one day. What's this here? That's probably um, a children's clothes store. Our personal finance expert, Sinead Ryan, is in her element running the numbers. And the first thing that jumps out at her is over 900 euros in debit card withdrawals. There's a lot of money coming out. Park Boutique, iTunes, Olympus, Tesco, PlayStation, Halfords, Park Snacks. There's a lot of unconscious spending going on. I want to see what else they're spending their money on. And it's not just the debit card. He's spending money to take out cash with his Visa card. Nobody takes out cash on their credit card. Keith does. The day after all these purchases, they're tipping into overdraft. And look, they've been charged fees. But bank fees, they're both responsible for. Sinead can also see that the house in Roscommon is being rented out for less than the monthly mortgage repayments. I mean, the big, big elephant in the room is this house it, in Roscommon. It absolutely is. There's a good few areas there that we can tackle. We can help them. Yeah, we need to make a plan. Yes. What it don't get, I can't use. I want money. Each week on My Money and Me, our industry insiders are on hand with their insider tips to save you money. My name is Laura Cunningham and I'm the editor of Confetti magazine and these are my wedding insider tips. A lot of venues will offer you a discount of between 10 and 20% on their rates if you get married off peak. So that would be November, January, February. Also, if you get married midweek, you'll probably get yourself an extra maybe 10% off. You could save up to 100 euro by having a fake tear in your wedding cake. Just ask your cake designer to decorate a styrofoam layer. It'll look like a much bigger cake, but it will cost you a lot less. If you can bear to part with it, you could also sell your wedding dress after the day. A lot of brides are doing it now and they're making up to 50% back. There's a misconception that it's always cheaper to buy your own drink, but that's not always the case. Chances are the corkage fees that you'll pay on top of what you paid for the wine itself might end up obliterating any saving that you made. So at least if you use the venue's wine, you only pay for what you drink. My top insider tip is to pay with your gifts. So on the day of your wedding, your best man is going to have a lot of envelopes with some lovely cash gifts that your friends gave you in there. And you can use those to pay certain vendors, for example, your band or your DJ, meaning you don't have to budget for them before the day. So you might be able to book that band that was just a little too expensive. Sinead has gone through Lorna and Keith's finances and we've come up with a plan for the next month. They want to save for a house deposit in Dublin, so they need to make changes fast. I'm waiting to see what, what, what Sinead comes back with to say, you know, here's what you haven't spotted before, you know. Um, so I'm hoping that, that, that something can be done, but, mm. but uh, you know, we certainly haven't identified it before. Along with topping up their mortgage in Roscommon and paying rent in Dublin, we've also discovered that Keith and Lorna withdraw €900 Euro a month on their debit card and keep no receipts. So we need to see where that money goes. Keith thinks that a lot of his money goes on coffee and Lorna knows that she's spending a lot on kids' clothes. But she got a surprise when he told her the amount. 2000 a year. Yeah, I didn't think I was spending that amount of money now. I just think 2000 is a staggering amount of money. Mm. Fortunately, Sinead has found an easy way to save them some money straight away. Now, another big bill that I can see going through are medical expenses. Tell mm. me a little bit about that. Uh, about two years ago, I was uh, diagnosed with a blood condition. Uh, it means that weekly I have to take a, uh, an injection. And uh, it's quite expensive. Uh, without the drugs payment scheme, it would be about 150 a week. So with the drugs payment scheme, it works out as about 144 a month. That's right. Yeah. And that's the most anybody in Ireland has to pay towards yeah. their own medicine. But did you know that you can get tax relief on that 144 euros really? every single month? No, I didn't no. actually, know. Well, on your average expenditure every year, which is about 1,728 euros, uh, you can get tax relief of 345 euros. The good news is you can claim it back for the last four years. Brilliant. That'd be great. That's super.
Every year, millions of euro of your money goes unclaimed from revenue in the form of tax relief to which people are fully entitled. Now, one of the easiest and most common ways is through the Med One form. This allows you claim back medical expenses. It's very easy to complete. You don't have to attach all your receipts, but you should keep them and you'll get a check in the post within six to ten weeks. You have a habit of obviously looking in your wallet going, I have no money in there, and get it using your credit card to take out cash. Yes. How much does it cost to take cash out of the, uh, with the credit card? I have card? no idea. 250. 250 every time. So uh, one month there, you went and you took out 20 quid out of the hole in the wall, mm -hmm. it cost you 250. The next day, you took out 20 quid, it cost you 250. The next day, you took out 20 quid, it cost you 50. Okay. So you spent 750 <laughs> taking out 60 yeah. euro, yeah. which is a total waste of money. Yeah. And you know what? It's even worse than that, Katrina, because the credit card company, when you use your credit card to take out cash, instead of giving you a six week moratorium to repay them, they mm. start charging interest from that day. Okay. Okay. After enticing you in with introductory offers, many credit cards charge you different rates for purchases and cash withdrawals, anything from around 13 to around 23%. If you do use your credit card to make a cash withdrawal, you could be charged a higher rate, a cash advance fee, and the interest will start immediately. So the golden rule is, if you want to avoid interest and charges, never use your credit card to withdraw cash. And if you can, try and pay off the bill in full at the end of every month. So, we're going to set you a challenge, okay. <laughs> which is you, you are a sleepwalking spender. You just drop money around the place. <laughs> Who knows what it's spent on? Nobody can tell. So what we're going to do is we're going to give Lorna the card. Lorna is going to be yes. in charge of that. <laughs> it's all going to go on to children's clothes. <laughs> no, no, no. We have another plan for that. If you need any money, ask Lorna for it. And she... it. We are getting none. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting challenged as well, is she? Lorna, yes. we're going to cut the children's clothing expenditure okay. down from a very lofty sum to a more reasonable average of €30 Euro a month. Now, of course, one of the other big expenditure items uh, every month is paying for your mortgage on your house in Roscommon. And really, at this stage, I think we need to go down and have a look at that house and get to grips with it. As second-time buyers, Lorna and Keith will need a 20% deposit for a house in Dublin, which means they need to save around €60,000. For the next month, Lorna is in charge of all cash spending. After the break, we'll see how she gets on. And Sinead investigates the house in Roscommon. Do we know how much the house is valued at, for instance? Um, no, haven't actually... Yeah, I think we, we we remember what the last house here was sold for. And what was, it was that? 90,000. Gosh, that's so a big drop, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And just how much control do we have over our spending? In the first of Dr. Pete Lund's weekly experiments, the My Money and Me consumer panel explores anchoring, how planting a number in our heads can affect how much we are willing to spend. If I put a number into your mind, it'll act like an anchor and you won't move far enough from it. Around 100,000 Irish homeowners are still in negative equity after the property crash. Lorna and Keith Kelly are among those. So they've come to us for help as they want to save for a deposit on a new house in Dublin. Just a little bit of a change in attitude and they're going to save a, a lot of money. Our personal finance expert Sinead Ryan wants them to become conscious of their spending. She's given Lorna sole control of the ATM card and told her to keep track of all their cash outgoings for the month. I am enjoying looking after the receipts because our main goal is to someday have a new deposit for a new house in Dublin. So I think we're being extra conscious of how much we're spending. Keith has actually been doing really well. I gave him the 40 euro last week and he went and got his haircut and he hasn't actually come back for any more. And I'm not volunteering to give him cash either, so. Each year in Ireland, parents spend an average of 563 euro per child on clothes. We've discovered that Lorna spends 2,000 a year on clothes for their two kids, and we want to break that habit. They have a family holiday already booked for the summer and a mountain of clothes for the 10-day trip. A checked-in bag costs an average of 55 euros for a round trip. So I'm convinced that Lorna could fit all Faye needs into a cute little carry-on bag and not just save money on luggage fees, but prove that she didn't need to spend all that money on kids' clothes in the first place. Let's see if we can get all the stuff that you were planning on bringing on holidays into this and see where we are. Okay, this is everything that I have. 
not going to work? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the old stuff. Let's just call. Let's put in the essentials, things that she definitely needs. Okay, so towel, underwear, socks. Towel, underwear, socks, yeah. Swimsuit. How many pairs of shorts? Um, Two, because you can wash one and wear one. Two pairs for 10 days. I find this kind of overwhelming. How many dresses will you put in? Six. You bought way too many clothes. Shoes. Yeah, Edgy. that's it. Done? Yeah. I feel it. liberated. I don't know about you. <laughs> Are I'm you surprised? surprised? I'm very surprised, yeah. I wouldn't have even tried that. So these are all the holiday clothes that you're not bringing with you? No. Look at that, it's brilliant, no? That's it done, yeah. Off you go. I'm packed now and for holidays. And she's going to be beautifully dressed. Yeah. <laughs> Lorna and Keith bought a house in Roscommon in 2007 for €255,000. When they moved back to Dublin, they didn't want to sell as the value had dropped so much. But they are paying rent in Dublin and want to start house hunting there. So Sinead needs to find out exactly how the Roscommon house is affecting the family finances. So your mortgage at the moment is about 715 a month. Yeah. Right. And tell me, what rent are you getting in to offset that? Um, 650. Gosh, okay. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a shortfall. There and of is, course yeah. you have expenses as a landlord, don't you? Yeah. You have repairs and maintenance, maintenance and insurance yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So tell me, um, have you thought about any of the solutions that are presented to look at that debt? I mean, do we know how much the house is valued at, for instance? Um, no, haven't actually... Yeah, I think we 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 remember what the last house here was sold for. And what was, was that? Ninety thousand. Yeah, Gosh, that's so a big drop, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, we have briefly had someone kind of look at it a few years ago, and we thought it might have been up to around one hundred and seventy then. Uh, but we're not certain. So that's something we need to do straight away: get it valued, find out exactly how much it's worth, and then we'll know what we're dealing with right yeah. here. There's a big difference between being an owner-occupier and a landlord. And a lot of people during the Celtic Tiger found themselves as accidental landlords, just like Keith and Lorna. The rights and obligations of that are quite onerous. You have to register the property with the PRTB. Your insurance costs will go up. You may be paying a higher interest rate on your mortgage. And the rent is treated as income, so you have to file a tax return. The dilemma is whether to keep the house or sell the house. And it's a tough one. <laughs> The My Money and Me Consumer panel are taking part in a series of experiments to see if we're in control of our money or is our money in control of us. This week, it's all about the power of numbers. What goes on inside your head when you decide how much you're willing to pay for something? You might think you make a rational choice. Do you decide what the item is worth to you? It's your choice. No one could get inside your head and change how much you're willing to pay for something, could they? The question is remarkably easy. Please write down whatever day of the month you were born on. I was born on the 16th of April. Okay, so I would write the number 16 in at the top of there. In this experiment, we've essentially put a random number into people's heads, the day on which they were born in the month. Now's where the fun starts. How much you'd be willing to pay for this good bottle of French wine? Then we hold an auction for the bottle of wine. The question is, will the random number we've put in their heads influence their bids? My birth date is 17, as it happens, when I was one cent below that. My birthday is the 25th, so it probably did shove me up to the top end of the market. So that was interesting. I just kind of stuck around my birth date, I picked 12. My birth date is the 20th. Just seems, yeah, a little bit like conjuring a number from nowhere, but it was there. People whose birthdays are up in the high teens or in the 20s have ended up bidding, you know, somewhere in the high teens. People born later in the month bid, on average, more than 15 euro. But the people who were born earlier in the month bid less than 12. The number we'd randomly put in their heads dramatically altered what they would bid for the bottle. Realistically thinking back, if I was in a shop, I don't even know, would I pay the price that I was even going to bid on it? I was definitely sticking closer to my, my birthday number. If you go into an electrical shop and you meet a good salesperson who's trying to sell you, say, a television, right? you might go in thinking, I want to buy a television for maybe four or 500 euros, and they'll take you up and they'll say, oh, this is a really popular model at the moment. It's got all these things, and it'll be about seven or 800. But what they've done is they'll have moved you up again. You won't move far enough back down. So you'll end up spending five or 600 instead of the 400 you went to spend. Something as simple as being told a number or thinking about a number can really anchor you to that point. That was very interesting for me. This experiment shows what's called the anchoring effect. Simply having a number in your head influences what you're willing to pay for something. And that means if somebody else puts a number in your head, it's going to influence you. What you need to keep in mind is what your original idea is of how much it's worth to you. 
Sinead has arranged for Angus Oates, a local auctioneer, to value the house in Roscommon. Keith and Lorna paid €255,000 for it in 2007 and need to know how much it's worth today. It will have a big impact on their plans to buy their next home in Dublin. We have some houses out the back that were sold recently. We have one there, a four-bedroom, semi-detached, which was sale agreed in the last two weeks at 85000 And we have another one just up here as well, another four-bedroom, semi-detached, which was sale agreed at 90000 But uh, this particular property being a <coughs> detached property, it's in a better location. This house would sell quite easily. Keith is eagerly awaiting a phone call from the auctioneer to find out how much they might be able to sell the house for. OK. So uh, 130000 not as much as we had hoped. We had hoped for maybe closer to about 170000 So a little bit dejected. That, that, that certainly um, uh, gives us something to think about. Now that they know the house in Roscommon is worth €125,000 less than they paid for it, it's time to find out what's next for Lorna and Keith. Originally, you were looking to get a deposit for a house in Dublin. Yeah, I think now since we got the house valued and kind of see how much negative equity we are in and then you add on the deposit on top of that for a normal three-bed house in Dublin, we're looking at about 140000 between the two, so very, it was kind of an easy decision. We're going to move back to Roscommon. As soon as we, we decided that that was the financial thing to do, it actually kind of made sense from a family point of view as well. The difference between renting and their mortgage means that moving back to Roscommon adds up to a €6,875 annual saving. And Keith is going to work from home one day a week, so added commuting fees will only knock 3,840 off that figure. So the move alone will put over 3,000 a year back in their bank account. One of the other areas that was um, interesting in terms of this whole experiment was Keith's walking around money. Um, we asked you to keep note of what you were spending, mm. and it turns out that you're spending 15 euro a day. So it adds up to 3,900 euro, nearly 4,000 euro a year, which is significant. Very significant, yeah. It's it's mainly like a, a, a dinner a day and my couple of coffees. So um, it's just I'm going to have to be more prepared. I think that's probably the big lesson that I've learned from this is actually keeping a track of what we're what we're spending on that daily spend. So how will you be able to cut down that cost? Living at home uh, and working from home uh, one day a week is going to obviously reduce one of those days. And then if I try and have two days where I'm prepared uh, going in, and means m maybe eating out twice a week, maybe. If Keith sticks to that plan, they'll save another 1,950 a year, bringing their running total to almost 5,000. And surely there's another big saving to be made on kids' clothes. You were spending 2,000 a year on clothes for yeah. kids. If you halved that, yeah. it'd be 1,000 euro a year. Yeah, it'd be huge. Yeah. And I haven't actually bought anything. I have bought nothing since we started this challenge, so it'd be very good. So I think it's really worth the effort to try and do that. Yeah, no, it definitely is, yeah. I definitely think that would work for me. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Cutting the spend on children's clothes in half adds another 1,000 to the savings. So after moving back to Ross Salmon, Lorna and Keith will be nearly €6,000 a year better off. You didn't yeah. actually know what you were spending beforehand, so the saving could be even greater than that. It's amazing when you, yeah. when you, when you d dig in deep um, how much more is actually there, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think if we come back to you in five years' time and there's 30000 in the bank, we'll be delighted with you. We will, Great. don't we? <laughs> yeah, it'll be super. I think the process definitely helped us decide to move back to what's common. Yeah, that absolutely. I think we would have yeah. still been very kind of, will we, won't we, mm -hmm. if we hadn't gone through it. I, I, I think having Sinead's support there to know that we're making the right decision, in a way we've kind of, it, it was a decision I think we were going to have to make at some point, but to know that it's the right decision for us, I think yeah. that was really important actually, yeah. While Keith and Lorna are happy with their decision to move back to Roscommon and park any thoughts of buying in Dublin for the time being, it's not without sacrifice. Keith is going to spend about eight hours a week commuting, but it will save them around €6,000 a year, which is a huge help to their family finances. I think they've made the right decision.